Okay. Now, so far in chapter 12, we'll be concerned with the geometry of motion. Now, <clears throat> from this point on, the next three chapters, we're going to be studying kinetics. Okay, we'll be just going to take it one step further. Now we're going to study the causes of motion. What's really causing the particle to be moving a certain way? Okay. Now, back in chapter 12, we study how this particle is moving, right? Rectilinear coordinate, curvilinear coordinate. That's the how of motion. Now, we're going to study the why of motion. Why is it moving a certain way? Now, <clears throat> we're going to use three methods. First, it's simply the Newton's second law method, which is really essentially the most important method. Okay, the most important law okay, in physics, right, including dynamics. So that's next chapter, 13. Next two chapters are based off of chapter 13. Okay, it comes from Newton's second law, just that we do some mathematical manipulation to come up with different forms of second law, and it's called work energy for chapter 14 and impulse momentum method. The chapter 15. Okay, let's look at chapter 13. Using the second law method. Now, when you talk about second law, in your mind, you might be thinking F equals MA. That's very, very common, right? But that's not just that. There's actually a bit more than that. Okay. This right here, F equals MA, this equation is actually a vector equation. It's the force vectors equals mass times acceleration vector. Okay? But that's not it. That's more. Left hand side, it's just not a single force vector. There's actually many forces. So you need to sum all of them up. Sum of all the forces. Okay. One more thing. It's not just any kind of force. It's all the external forces that are acting on your particle that is causing the particle to be accelerating a certain way. Okay. So left hand side says sum all the external forces up, okay, right hand side, it's the effect, that's the consequence, that is, okay, it's moving a certain way, and having a certain acceleration in a certain direction, so that's it, this is Newton's second law, that's one equation that covers the entire chapter, that's all, okay, now, let's look at how we apply it, now, <coughs> To analyze the dynamics problem, in this chapter, we're going to use a six-step method. Okay? So, let's look at the analysis procedure. Okay? Six steps. Step one, you first define a coordinate system. Okay? Very first step. You do that by analyzing, or by recognizing the direction of your particle. Okay, which way is it moving? Okay, whether it's rectilinear, if it's moving like this way, then the coordinate system would be maybe x direction, right? Horizontal. If your particle is moving, let's say this way, okay, along a curve, then maybe you want to use tangent normal. Okay, so coordinate system first defined. Now next two steps, step two and three, are done together. Step two, you draw something called a free body diagram, okay, or FBD. Okay? Now that should be quite familiar to you from statics. Step three, you do it together with step two, and then step three you draw kinetic diagram. Okay. Okay, 
AD. Sometimes um, we also call it equivalent diagram. Okay, so equivalent or kinetic diagram to mean the same thing. Okay, now you do step two and three together side by side. Next step, the most important step of all, we apply Newton's second law for each particle. Okay, if you have more than one particle, then apply this for each particle. Next, you count whether or not the number of equations equals the number of unknowns. Okay. Now, if you have more unknown than number of equations available, then mathematically you need more equations. Right? That's where six step comes in. And where does the equation come from? Well, last chapters. You bring in kinematics. Okay. There you have it. This is the six step method. All right, and it's very very logical. All right. And here, this vector equation okay, actually has several equations, right? Because you need to apply that into each of the principal directions okay, of your coordinate system, right? So, therefore, you have a number of equations available. Let's say x, y, and z. In that case, you have three equations, right? And then, as long as you have established this procedure, then you, you'll be able to apply the second law method to any kind of situation.